it's um, day 102 now. I've kind of had a bit of a day off. I've just been um, showing people around the new farm and different things and getting ideas about how we can get it better for the students. But I thought I'd um, talk about this wheat. So, some of you might have seen on Twitter and in the videos the other day that I was talking about Warburtons that had cut in ties with a, a farming cooperative that they used to buy all the well, most of the UK grain fruit for making their loaves of bread. So sort of last 27 years they've traded with them for. Anyway, they've, they've chosen now, with no sort of warning or, or any sort of debate about the matter, to, to go to a different company, which will still mostly source UK wheat. And half of the wheat that goes into a loaf of bread actually comes from Canada anyway, because it has a better protein spec. We can grow it here, but it doesn't yield anywhere near as well. And in order to do that, we um, have to... Um, we, we need a, a bigger premium for it really so it's just it's cheaper to just bring it in from Canada sad but true it's just economics but, but what a lot of people don't know is a loaf of bread costs about £1.20 maybe um, in that loaf of bread it only actually contains around 10% of that price is for the the main ingredient which is wheat so I think 90 odd 98% of, of a loaf of bread is made from wheat the rest is you know a bit of salt and emulsifiers and a bit of soya and a, and a bit of bit of water and stuff to sort to, to make it work but but yeah less than 10% is actually the wheat so when you hear wheat prices going up and bread prices going up it, it's kind of ridiculous really because it, it's such a small part of what's in it it is made up of the wheat. I think actually the packaging is, is dearer than the, than the wheat that goes to make it. Um, a lot of people are going, oh, you know, you put this tweet out saying about how it's bad that they're gonna start using this other company that's a multinational company that um, is owned half by the Americans. Now, the, there's a lot of truth in, in the fact that it is owned by a half American company. And, and what, what is unfair with farming is what we call furnace in the supply chain. So, you know, we'll grow this, which is 90 95% of the commodity that makes bread, but we'll only receive 10% of that. The other 90% is lost by the, the, the processors and the merchants that, that, that buy the grain and send it to the mill and da 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 da. Now, losing this cooperative out that middle has now added another layer of someone to take a cut before it gets from our farm into your loaf. So they will try and buy that wheat as cheap as they possibly can, try and sell it for as dear as they possibly can so that they get a return for their shareholders. And then that's all that matters to them really is, is profits to the shareholders that own the company. Whereas the farming cooperative are designed not to make a profit, they just run at cost to get the grain off farm into its end destination for as little as possible. And any profits that they make get reinvested back into the cooperative to make it more efficient for the future. So it might be new trucks or it could be new equipment, ports and handling equipment for exports or anything like that. Because it's not just wheat that they deal with, they deal with everything as well. But it, it, it's not good that again, we're getting squeezed. So this parent company that, that, that's also now gonna be in charge of moving the grain from farm to Warburton's also owns vast amounts of the fertilizer industry, which is an input that we use. Now, when you own over 50% of the fertiliser supply industry. You can kind of name your price and no one can do anything about it. And, and that is what's happening all the time. All the inputs coming into farm, they're trying to swallow up and all the, all the stuff leaving the farm, they're trying to swallow up and then just squeeze us in the middle. And they're making huge profits each year. I mean, Cargill, which is joint owner of Frontier, share price actually went up, I think 4% on, um, on Thursday, which is when the, um, the news broke. Now, I don't know how many billion Cargill's were, but I suspect its share price went up more than the whole of UK agriculture's worth that day, which is which is slightly concerning, but that's just the world we live in now. These these multinational conglomerates, you know, are taking over the place, whether that be Walmart, um, buying Asda and, and different things, and, and believe it or not, ABF, Associated British Foods, also own Primark and all that. It, it's, the, the world's just been taken over by huge companies and it's just a shame really you know it, 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 something needs to change the, the supply chains are broken everyone says it's the supermarkets that make the money out of the farmers 
It isn't really. They sell a lot of our products. I think Tesco only work on about a one or two percent margin on the stuff, but they have such a high turnover they can make it. It's it's the it's the people supplying the stuff onto the farms, and it's the processes in the middle that make all the money and and squeezes all the time. Um, there's this saying that, um, that farmers buy everything wholesale, everything retail, and sell everything wholesale, and it. Sadly, it's still true. I think it was one of the American presidents said it years ago. It might have been um, Kennedy, I don't know, but a long time ago. And it, it, it's still happening to this day now. Everything we buy, we have to pay retail price for, and everything we sell, we, we just get what we can get for it. We're, we're, uh, we're not price setters, we're price takers, and we're on a global market. It's a little bit sad as well, like I say, that 50% of the wheat in a, in a loaf of bread does actually come from Canada. But if they're good at growing it, then, then hats off to them. We can grow it here, but we just we just need a bit more money for it than Canadians can grow it for. So for it to be sustainable, otherwise we'd lose money each year growing it. So that's about it for today. Bit of a boring one because there's not really much happening because it's raining outside. But but that's an update of the of the, of the wheat market and supply chain. So I'll see you all tomorrow.